Let's dive into the world of Lake Malawi and talk about one of the coolest African cichlids that you can own. It's this guy right here. Are you ready to learn about this species? Here we go. Meet Gary. He's what people call a Nimbochromus venustus, but he also goes by the moniker Giraffe Hap, or just venustus. But I just call this guy Gary because that's what my wife named him. And he's her favorite fish, and I love him too. But if you know anything about me from my videos, this guy, Zeke, is my absolute number one. He's a zebra obliquidens. What's up, Zeke? All right, back to the Venustus. These guys have a lot going for them, making them one of the most popular African cichlids in the hobby. I'm gonna tell you all I know about them, and I promise that the last fact I have in store for you at the end will completely stun and amaze you. So hold on tight. So let's talk about that crazy pattern that Gary has all over his body. It's why they call the Venustus the giraffe hap. It's so unusual and it really catches your eye. It's probably why even stores like Petco carry them, but I wouldn't advise you to buy one from a big box store. If you do, you never know if they're coming from a good breeder, so your fish could be more likely to suffer from congenital defects, or it may not have the best colors when it matures. It's best for you to do research and buy from a reputable dealer. Anyway, people are drawn to this incredibly unique fish. I was, and even my wife was. She insisted that I buy one, so I did. Most peacocks and haps are dimorphic, meaning that males and females look different. In most cases, the males are absolutely gorgeous, while females are, shall we say, less than gorgeous. But Venustas are different, because even though they are still dimorphic, the females actually look pretty cool too. Watching the beautiful males and females is like watching a fashion show. Uh, aren't, aren't you gonna go do your little turn on a catwalk, Lois? If you love that giraffe pattern, then you are 100% guaranteed your female will keep that as she matures. But not so with the males. As they mature, their head will start turning a brilliant blue, and blue highlights will appear along their fins. At full maturity, if they are in a seat of dominance in the tank, they'll even get more blue. And while their heads retain the full blue color, their bodies can almost lose that giraffe pattern completely as it turns more of a beautiful gold green. Check out this stud from Squatch's Cichlids. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Absolutely stunning. And this was him just about three months ago, before he got all fired up. But the interesting thing is that they are both beautiful versions of the same fish. The males also have longer anal and dorsal fins. Oh, one thing, if you have a four to six inch male and he doesn't have any color yet, that doesn't necessarily mean it isn't a male. They tend to take a while to color up. Gary didn't start coloring up until he was about six inches. He had a few hints of blue in the right light. My wife would call out, hey, come look at Gary, he's got some blue. I'd come and look, there's no blue. You lied. But then as he turned and the light hit him just right, a little flash of blue would appear. Oh, you didn't lie. I love you, baby. But it wasn't until around six inches that he was showing us that he was definitely a real man. Hey, want to hear a quick story? Too late. Here we go. If you watch Ben Ochart, you may have heard him tell an incredible story about his tank boss, Venustus. He had the dominant colors I was just referring to. He was challenged for his position by an up-and-coming rival, Eye Biter. They were fighting for a while, and at one point, I guess the Venustus figured he was no match for the Eye Biter. He turned to flee. Ben watched as his dominant colors immediately vanished, and the old giraffe pattern returned. This happened in a split second, showing that he was no longer contending for the most powerful fish in the whole tank. He eventually won it back, by the way, because these guys are absolute beasts. And that brings me to the next topic, the size of the Venustus. Before we move on though, make sure you let me know in the comments which fish profile you'd like me to release next. Which fish would you like to know about? That's what she said. The Venustus isn't a monster, but he is a big boy. They gonna get big. And I don't just mean long, they get bulky. If he were in a computer game, he'd be what's known as a tank. In the wild, I've read that these males can get up to 12 inches long, but usually in the aquarium hobby, you're looking at about nine or 10 inches. Females will come in slightly smaller. It's a shame that many people are gonna buy this guy from a big box store when they're two inches long and go home and put them in their 30 gallon tank and think it's all good. Because he's so big, you're gonna need a big tank. Now you'll find people out there saying you can put a Venustus in a 75 gallon tank, and you can, but should you? That's four feet long, and he's gonna be almost a foot long. So that's only four body lengths. They like open water and room to swim. African cichlids are very active. How much activity is he gonna get if he can only swim three additional body lengths? I would feel sorry for him. 
For this reason, I think a six foot tank is the bare minimum tank size for one of these cichlids. So a 125 gallon tank or larger, and always go larger if you can. These fish are meant to roam an entire lake, so try not to stick them in the smallest glass box you can find. And since we're talking about tank size, we might as well talk about tank decor. It's recommended to build caves and other structures for your Venustas, but be careful with this. If you're putting your Venustas with other African cichlids, there can be some landowner issues. Fine, fine, get off my lawn! You can do it, but be careful no one gets hurt staking their claim. And something else you can do is hit those like and subscribe buttons if you've made it this far into the video. I really appreciate it. Now, since your Venustas will like to sift sand, you'll want smaller particles of substrate that they can easily sift through. Definitely not gravel or bare bottom. I use Caribsea aragonite because it's the perfect size, it raises the pH, which they like, and it's the color I wanted. I don't have any plants in my tank because they tend to get eaten by most African cichlids who love their after dinner salads. Okay, I wouldn't have them even if that weren't true. I can keep fish alive, but any plants that become my responsibility will soon pass. He's dead, Jim. But you can try it if you want. Some people claim that plants like Anubias won't get eaten by your Africans, but others say they still get munched on. You could put fake plants in your tank and these can be beneficial for line of sight breaks. They help your fish forget why they wanted to kill somebody so bad. You might also be able to find some realistic ones though. I bought my smaller black fake plants from Lower 40 Farms on Etsy, and I like them. To me, they don't look too fakey. Oh, by the way, all African cichlids hate the following decor. The no fishing signs, SpongeBob SquarePants pineapples, and anything Star Wars. Don't do it, just don't do it. Let's talk about tank mates, shall we? The ideal tank mates for your Venustas would be either no one, where the devil is everyone? Or other Venustas, or is it Venustases? Uh, whatever. And definitely not more than one male Venustas. They suffer from what's known as conspecific aggression, which means they want to kill everyone who looks like they do. How they know what they look like, I have no idea. I am gorgeous! But they know. So a male with several females can work well, and your male will always be wearing his breeding dress, looking his best for the ladies. Make sure you have about three to six females. Less and your Venusus will drive the ladies crazy, but in a bad way. Creepy. I hear it's not easy to breed Venususes, but I've never tried. Not into breeding fish. Anyway, if you have an all-male tank, only have one Venusus, and it's best to keep him with other somewhat aggressive haps. I have mine with peacocks and haps, which seems to be working fine for me. It isn't recommended to have Mbuna in the same tank for a few reasons. First, Mbuna can be extremely aggressive, and even though they will be smaller than your Venustas, their sheer disposition will make them meaner and tougher than he is, and a Venustas might wind up injured or dead. Plus, haps need a lot of protein, and Mbuna shouldn't have a lot of protein, but more plant-based foods. Having said that, I have my Venustas in with my boy Ray, named after the rays of the sun. He's a yellow lab and Buna, which tend to be on the much less aggressive side. Isn't he cute? He sure is. One more thing about tank mates. Make sure they're not small enough to fit in his mouth. And he's gonna get a big mouth. The general rule is that if it can fit in his mouth, it'll eventually wind up there. But at least your Venustas will get a gourmet meal out of the whole deal. That's not all bad. So once you get your Venustas, what's he gonna act like anyway? Well, as with any fish, you never will know until you bring him home. And then his behavior can change in an instant, like the flick of a switch. However, generally your Venustas will be tough, but not a true jerk. Because of their size and somewhat aggressive behavior, it isn't uncommon for him to become a tank boss. Gary really doesn't mess with anyone, but he doesn't get messed with either. He just roams from side to side, does a little sand sifting, looking for a little snack, and leaves everyone alone. If he were going to be compared to a Hollywood actor, I would say that he'd be Vin Diesel. So one really cool characteristic that Venustas has is that he is an ambush predator. Just the name alone is cool. Ambush predator. So when no one's looking, he'll dive under some sand and you can't see him. Then he patiently waits for a bite-sized fish to swim by. And when he does, surprise! Out of the sand he comes and snatches up dinner before anyone knows what happened. The Venustas is like a horror story for small fish. He'll kill you! And that's the way he rolls. He just rolls. That's cool that he rolls. Oh, also, I've never seen my fish actually do this, but maybe it's because I don't have any super small fish in there. And by the way, did that last fact stun and amaze you? I can't hear you. Oh, probably because you're stunned. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.